So recently, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of uh, thoughts on family. Um, Jeremy even talked to us about what their theme has been in Evansville, where they, he's, their theme is focus on the family. Now, while I think uh, that is also related to blood family part of it, I also believe that's a, a big part of that is the focus on the family of God. And with Thanksgiving that just recently passed us here, there's been a lot of time that we've spent talking and thinking about family. Many of us were blessed with an opportunity to be with our loved ones, although not all of them, um, some of them for different reasons. And this got me to thinking about how Jesus would have spent this holiday if this would have been a holiday during his time frame. But luckily we have some answers to that already. In Mark chapter 3, we see what Jesus responds to about his family. Mark chapter 3, verse 31 says, Then Jesus' mother, brothers, mothers and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in the circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So this is probably not the answer that they were thinking they were going to get when they said, Jesus, your family is outside. Jesus asks them the question, well, who do you think family is? Who are my mother, my brothers and, and sisters? And he gives them the answer and he tells them, whoever does God's will is my family. Those are the ones that uh, I consider close to my family. And just like Jesus, who is defining family, I too have been reminded of many loved ones, of my many loved ones, and family is so much bigger than blood relatives. My brothers and sisters here are the family relationships that I cherish and I hold dearly. While I have a connection to my siblings growing up through life, many of them I do not hold a relationship with. Now, I don't believe that Jesus had a poor relationship with his blood relatives, his siblings and his mother. Rather, he is emphasizing the bond between us is much stronger than any blood bond. It is the bond that is centered around Jesus and the Father. In fact, Jesus tells us, if we place too much emphasis on blood, we are headed for disappointment. Matthew chapter 10 describes this very easily. In chapter 10, verse 34 and 36, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemy will, enemies will be those of his own household. What? That's just not something you would expect Jesus is saying these, in this instance when he's, but Jesus, you're all about peace. You're all about bringing us together. And it says here, it sounds like we're being going to be set against one another. Well, there's reason for that. And while I have siblings of my own that, I, that will not speak to me because of my faith in Jesus, that only reaffirms these verses to me to be absolute truth. Because of where my stance is and my beliefs, my own family members have been set against me. As we must all weigh in our relationships, we should be careful to remember how truly blessed we are to know what real family is. Those who are in the body of Christ. Those that are children of the Father. Luke was even talking to that this evening in 1 Peter chapter 1, says we're to love the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again. That's what brings us together. That's the bond that is eternal. But if you're not in that body, 
You're not a child of God. You're missing out on so much more than just a loving family. You're missing out on the most important relationship you could possibly have. And that's the one with your father. The one who gave everything for you. Your creator. The one who loves you. Because without this bond, there would be no hope, no connection. Nothing to look forward to. So I want to leave you with some final thoughts this evening on where our relationships stand. Which ones do we hold dear? Are they with the world or are they with God? 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what can fellowship or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Baal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out of them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch, touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you. And get this. You will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. That's the relationship that we should cherish and long for that relationship with the Father. So what is your relationship the Father with him? Is it strained? Do you even have one? Is it good? We have an opportunity to make it right. And not just tonight, but anytime. But uh, I would say don't put it off. We're not promised tomorrow. Make sure that this relationship you have with God is of the utmost important thing that you take care of first. If we can help you in any way, we ask that you come forward as we stand and sing.